Welcome back to Math Party, people. I'm Anderson, your ASVAB coach, and we're here to ace the ASVAB as always. But the main issue that we're dealing with today, the law of exponents. A lot of us don't know how to handle multiplying powers, dividing them, square roots of powers, powers of powers, all that stuff. What does that all mean? I got your back. So watch this video, so that way you can learn how to handle each and every single one of these different types of problems. That way you can feel confident and comfortable moving forward. And so if you'd like, click the link in the description of this video. That way you can get the problems that we're gonna do along with notes so you can follow along nice and easy. And as a reminder, we have a free practice test out now that includes video solutions to both math sections, paragraph comprehension, and explanations for word knowledge and general science. So go ahead, click the link in the description to go to the website. The practice test is included in there. That way you can raise your score and get the job you deserve. Let's go ahead and get started. And so again, here we are. Here's the first set of problems that we're gonna be taking care of. Again, you can pause the video here or click the link in the description. That way you can go to the website and get all of the notes that I'm gonna be going over. That way you don't have to stress out too much. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. We have these five problems that we're gonna tackle one by one. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, this one right here, probably the hardest one. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of hop around to show you from start to finish how these different rules apply so you can really gain that confidence moving forward. So we're gonna start off with actually problem number two. So I'm gonna come back to number one, don't worry about it. I'll come back to number one, but I do wanna warm you up and not lose you. So number two here, we have two P squared multiplied by three P squared. So here's how you wanna handle this. This is multiplying powers. When you're multiplying powers, all you need to do is add the exponents of the same variables. One more time, we're gonna be adding the exponents of the same variables. So that p squared that you see right there and p squared there, that's gonna become p to the power of two plus two. So right over here, that's gonna be in green, p to the power of two plus two. And really quick, before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly, in our course, you're going to get access to recorded lessons. You're going to get access to guided practice just like this, worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online. And lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way, when you take the test, there's no test anxiety. There's no pressure because you've been timed before. You know what to do. And that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more. So take a brief moment. Click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. Now a lot of us are gonna ask, okay, why do you actually add those exponents, right? And it's because you're doing this. When you look at p squared, really what you're doing is, hey, anything squared is that number times itself, right? It appears twice. So if you have five squared, five times five, 10 squared, 10 times 10, p squared, p times p, right? And so that's essentially what you have, p times p. But if you have another p squared, think about it, my party people, you have p times p again. So if you have p squared multiplied by p squared, think about it. That's essentially gonna be p times p times p times p. And so how many p's do we have? We have four total. We're gonna add up the number of times it's being multiplied because that's gonna give us p to the power of four. So again, if you're on the website, make sure to click the link in the description to see these notes. That way you can really have a good time moving forward. But there it is. When it comes to multiplying powers, you add the exponents if they have the same variable or same base, same letter, however you wanna say it. But there it is. And with the regular numbers out in front, the two right there and the three right there, those you just multiply as normal. So two times three, that's gonna give us six. And so the answer here would be six P to the power of four. So again, multiplying powers, you'll add those exponents, the regular numbers out in front, just multiply them as normal. And that way you'll get C as your answer for number two. Now again, we haven't gone over number one yet. We haven't gone over number one. We're gonna come back to that one. So the first answer here is going to be C for number two. Now let's go ahead and check out number three. So number three, this is what we're dealing with powers to powers. So this might be a little confusing to some, but here's the idea. 
when you have a power to a power, you're going to go ahead and multiply the exponents now. That's the rule. When you have a power to a power, you multiply those exponents. So what it'll look like, it'll look like something like this. It'll look like this. We have a three out right there for the exponent. And so we will basically multiply those powers. So as a reminder, even though we don't see it, remember that on the four, there is a power of one. Remember, if you don't see an exponent on something, there is an exponent of one. Don't forget that. And so with that three, what's gonna happen is, we are going to basically multiply the three with that four to the power of one. And then we're gonna multiply the three with the exponent of two. So you're again, it's like distribution, but you're distributing it to the exponents. And so with that said, what this is gonna look like, let me bring this back. What this is gonna look like is this. We'll have four to the power of one times three. And then we also are gonna have x to the power of two times three. So that three, that exponent of three, is again, essentially getting distributed in the exponents. Powers to powers, multiply the exponents. So with that said, I want you to understand why this is the case, all right? I want you to understand why this is the case. So first of all, the answer is gonna be four to the power of three, x to the power of six. And four cubed, that's essentially like saying, four times four times four, right? Right, so one more time. Four to the power of three, that's saying four times four times four. Four times four is 16, 16 times four, 64. And so that's what we'll have right there. 64 X to the power of six. But again, there's no point in me just saying all these things without actually showing you why. So here's why. When you take a look at a power to a power over there, let me just go ahead and kind of, uh, you know, really show you what's going on. This is pretty interesting. So we have four X squared, all of it to the power of three. So remind ourselves, when we have a power, that means we're multiplying that number by itself that many times, right? X squared, X times X. Five to the power of three, five times five times five. Here, we have a bunch of jargon there to the power of three. And all that's gonna mean is we're taking that, multiplying it by itself three times. So, with that said, this will turn into 4x squared times 4x squared times 4x squared. Now, if we follow the rule that we just learned previously, when it came to multiplying powers, we're literally just gonna add those exponents, right? So, if you look over here, first and foremost, four times four times four, that's already happening there. That happened. Now, if you're asking, why did we do two times three up here? Where did that come from? I got you. So where that came from is right here. Remember that when we have the same bases or same variables being multiplied, we add those exponents. And what we see here is two plus two plus two. So if you're adding two to itself three times, what ends up happening is that's two times three. And that's exactly what we see here. And that's why we end up getting six. So powers to powers, multiply those exponents, giving us the correct answer here, B, 64X to the power of six. And I'll go ahead and mark that right there. So let's go ahead and go to number four, then number five, and we're coming back to one. I know I'm leaving number one for last because again, I do wanna make sure you're as confident and comfortable as possible. So I am coming back to number one after. But in the second practice set that I'll let you try out, I want you to go ahead and give it your all, picking whichever problem you want to try first. So we'll get there in a second, but here we go with number four. Let me give myself the room I need. We have 2x cubed divided by 2x squared. So when it comes to dividing powers, what you'll do, handle the regular numbers as normal, simplify them, divide them, whatever you got to do. But when it comes to the actual powers or exponents, what you're going to do here is you will subtract those exponents. So think about it like this. There's a little pattern here. When you're adding powers, or excuse me, when you're multiplying powers, you add those exponents. When you're dividing powers, you subtract the exponents. And then we'll talk about powers of powers and roots in a second because there's some more good notes coming up there. But with that said, the twos here are gonna cancel out. Two divided by two is gonna cancel out, you're fine. Now, if you're asking, well, why are we gonna subtract the exponents now? Because I heard the rule, but why are we subtracting? I got you. So what's happening here is, think about it like this. So the answer is gonna be x to the power of three minus two, which is x to the power of one, or just x. Remember, anything, any number is always to the power of one. We don't need to write it out all the time. But let me show you how we actually get there. 
Because when you're dividing powers, what you're doing is you're canceling out exponents. Don't believe me? Watch this. X to the power of three. What's that gonna be? X to the power of three, let me use a different color here. X to the power of three is gonna be X times X times X, right? Right. Now, if we're taking a look at the denominator here, X squared, isn't X squared the same thing as X times X? Right, fair enough. Now, what's gonna happen when you are dividing the same things? You're gonna cancel out what you can. And so X, X, goodbye. Then if I grab another color here, this X and that X are gonna cancel out as well, leaving you with just X. So there it is. If you're dividing powers, you are subtracting the exponents or just canceling them out. So that's a good way to think about it if you wanna build comfort here and confidence moving forward. It's all about understanding the whys before we start working for speed. So keep that in mind, my party people. And so up next, we're gonna take the answer here. That's gonna be C. There we are, we're all set. Now, going back here, there it is, that's C. Number five, we're gonna take care of number five real quick. Number five is uh, pretty straightforward actually. So what we have with number five is we are dealing with a negative exponent. So here, with this negative exponent, here's all you gotta know. When you have a positive exponent, so let's go ahead and say x cubed, you're essentially saying you're multiplying that number right here three times. So x times x times x. Now, if you had x to the power of, let's say, negative 2, what that says is you are dividing the number that many times. A negative exponent tells you to divide. And so, if you have x to the power of negative 2, that's the same thing as writing 1 over x squared, because you're dividing that many times. And so a negative root, or excuse me, a negative exponent, you can make it positive by basically switching it from the numerator to denominator or denominator to the numerator. Wherever it is, you just switch its position and you're fine. Because again, a negative exponent means you are dividing that number that many times. A positive exponent means you are multiplying that number that many times. So I hope that helps out because this will make number five pretty easy because here's the thing. This is gonna turn into x to the power of seven in the denominator because it was a negative seven in the numerator. And so you're saying you're dividing x seven times. Boom. But a lot of us may be asking, well, what happens to the six? What happens to that? Well, what happens to the six is it stays exactly where it was. It stays exactly where it was right there. No issues, no problem. Because the idea here is that the six doesn't have a negative exponent. Right now, the six just has an exponent of one that we don't see. So remember, we are only moving the piece of the monomial. That's a monomial that's only one term together, but we're only, we're only moving the pieces that have negative exponents. If it already has a positive exponent, leave it in the numerator, leave it where it was. It doesn't change. It's only the negative pieces, the negative exponent pieces that we're actually gonna move. And so there it is. And here is your regularly scheduled announcement, my party people. Remember guys, I host a free class every single week and more classes beyond that. So make sure to check the group tutoring schedule so you know when the classes are, when you can expect to see me live so you can raise your score and get that job you want. So click there to see the schedule and let's keep getting back to the YouTube video right over here. And that's why this was a pretty straightforward problem. That's why I like this one a lot. Um, the answer here will be B. It'll be B. So. With that said, let me go back over here. There's B. And now we're gonna handle number one finally. And remember after this one, we're gonna go ahead and do another set where I'm gonna give you some time to practice it and then I'll go over the answers as well. So here we are with number one. Let's go ahead and get to the elephant of the room. So we have a square root of 200 X to the power of four. So here's the thing. Remember how I said with powers of powers, you are multiplying those powers, right? When you're doing roots of powers, you are essentially dividing the exponents. So again, powers of powers, multiply the exponents. Roots of powers, divide the exponents. And so, what do we have here? We have a square root. Think about it, square. What, is, what number does square sound like? Because when you have x squared, that's a power of two. When you have a square root, that is a root of two. So this right here that I'm gonna write, you never really write it. It's always there, but you don't really write it. 
kind of like how there's always a one in front of the X or one in front of any number, right? There's always a one, but we don't exactly write it all the time. There's a two for a square root always there, but we just don't write it all the time just for not being redundant and repetitive. So with that said, what we're going to do here is again, divide those powers. So first off, I'm going to handle the X to the power of four, and then I'm going to show you how to handle the 200. So with the X to the power of four, essentially what you have is X to the power of four divided by two. Now, the reason I'm writing it like this is because this is a clean division. This is a clean division. Four divided by two is two right there. And so you can treat that as X squared and we still have that square root. So again, X squared was able to come out, but we still have that 200 on the inside. So how are we supposed to handle that 200, right? What are we going to do now to handle this the right way? So what we're going to do here is understand that when it comes to square roots, only perfect squares can come out. Only perfect squares can come out. And so what does that mean? Well, 200 isn't exactly a perfect square. Remember, a square root means what number multiplied by itself gives you that number. So 200, not a perfect square, but is there a perfect square inside of it? Yes. Isn't 200 the same thing as 100 times 2? It is. 200 is the same thing as 100 times 2. So allow me to go ahead and rephrase this. Allow me to rephrase this here and change this right over there. We're going to change that 200. I'm going to erase 200. I'm going to replace it with 2 multiplied by 100. Now, why did I do that? The reason I did that is because, again, 100 is a perfect square. 100 can come out of that square root. 100 can come out. And so with that said, what is the square root of 100? What multiplied by itself gives you 100? That's going to be 10. And so with that, nice and easy, the 10 will come out of the square root because it has to pass through the square root. So you got to go ahead and modify it. And so we'll end up having 10. Then the x squared is still there. And then we still have the square root. But what was left inside? What was left inside was the 2. So we have 10x squared with a square root of 2 being left behind. And that's why B is the answer for number 1. And so there's the first practice set, my party people. I'm hoping that I took you through a nice little warm up where we went over all of those rules. Multiplying powers, dividing powers, powers of powers, roots of powers, and negative exponents. If you know those five rules, then you're in a really good spot to dominate these types of problems without much of an issue. These are problems where, again, you just need to learn the procedure and then just practice for speed as you keep going along. And so with that said, let's go ahead and look forward to the next practice set right over here. So I'm going to give you a second here to go ahead and pause the video. I want you to give these a shot. That way we can go over the work together and you can continue building confidence. And if you like the way that I'm teaching, if you want to join a free class or a free practice test, feel free to click the link in the description to get that done. But if you already have and you want to upgrade and you want more, remember that the all access program is everything that my students need to pass the exam. That way they can get the jobs that they want. So I'll talk about that right after this next practice set if you're still interested. But let's go ahead, pause the video now and give it a shot. And time, let's go. So with that said, my party people, we got practice set number two. Let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm actually going to start right away, right away with number one. I'm going to start right away with number one. So I know that's the elephant in the room, but we got this. The square root of 18p. So here's the thing. When it comes to the 18, the 18 is not a perfect square, but it does contain one. It definitely does. Because remember, this is the same thing as saying the square root of nine times two times P. Now, why did I do that? Well, I did that because nine is a perfect square and nine times two is 18. So I didn't you know, change anything here. I didn't write any false information. We have nine times two is 18. So all I did was replace the 18 with nine times two. Now, the reason that that's useful is because nine is a perfect square. And so we can take the square root. And so the square root of nine is going to be three. And then on the inside, we still have the square root of two P. The two cannot come out because it's not a perfect square. 
and p can't come out either because p is not a perfect square. The exponent on p right now is 1. So if I were to try to take the square root, 1 divided by 2 is not clean. It's going to be, it's going to be 0 0.5 or 1 half, and that's not going to work. You want to maintain um, whole number exponents when you can, especially when it comes to taking the ASVAB. You'll see those answers as whole number exponents. But in case you don't, we can convert that to p to the power of 1 divided by 2. But for the sake of this problem, that's not the way that it's shown. And so that's all we can do. All we were able to do was bring out the 3, but the rest of it stays the same. And so we have 3 square root 2p, which is going to be b for the first answer. Now let's go ahead and take a look here at number 2. We're going ahead here, and we are multiplying powers. So I know that this is going to freak some people out, right? We're dealing with negative numbers. We don't like that all the time. That's not fun to do, right? But here's the, here's the idea. Follow the rules. That's it. Just follow the rules. That's all you got to do. So here, all we need to end up doing is, again, add those exponents. So what we have going on here, we have a 1 in front of the x to the power of negative 1, right? It's always there. It's just a 1. So 1 times 3 is just going to be 3. But then we're going to have those exponents being added together. So we're going to have x to the power of negative 1 plus negative 2. So here's the thing. A negative 1 plus a negative 2 you're basically adding two negative numbers. So treat them as if they're positive, but keep the answer negative. One plus two is three, but a negative three. All right, if you're having trouble dealing with negatives, remember my program, it's there for you, I got your back. But there it is, boom, that's gonna be negative three. Now we're not done here, because we actually have a result that has a negative exponent. And if we wanna write this with positive exponents, we'll have to go ahead and flip it. And so remember, the three right here stays the same. That's going to stay. It's the x to the power of negative 3. That's what's going to flip. Because x to the power of negative 3, remember, that's saying, hey, we're dividing by x three times. And so that'll move to the denominator, x to the power of 3, to turn it positive. And that's why when we look at our answer choices, c will be the correct answer. So let's keep it moving here, my party people. We got number 3 happening right now. So number 3. So we have a power here to a power. Okay. Follow the rules. When you have a power to a power, multiply those exponents. And so what we're gonna have here is remembering that the four has a power of one on it, and then the n has a power of negative two. All you need to do again, take that power, multiply it with these exponents. And so what that's gonna, what's gonna happen here is four to the power of one, we're gonna multiply by negative two, and then we're gonna have n to the power of negative 2 times negative 2. So with that said, we're just going to go ahead and again, follow the rules and see where it leads us. We got this. And so with that, booyah, we have 4 times 1 or 4 to the power of 1 times negative 2. That'll end up being, let me just zoom out a little bit, 4 to the power of negative 2. n to the power of negative 2 times negative 2. A negative times a negative is a positive, right? Yeah. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 2 is 4. So right now what we have is 4 to the power of negative 2 times n to the power of 4. Now we're not quite done yet. We are not quite done yet. Because remember, a negative power means that we are dividing that number that many times. So we have 4 to the power of negative 2, which is going to be the same thing as keeping the n to the power of 4 up top, because it's positive, right? Exponent's positive. In the denominator, we're going to have 4 squared. Again, to make the exponent positive, you simply move it from where it was to where it wasn't. So it was up top. Now we placed it in the denominator on the bottom. But lastly, what is 4 squared? 4 squared, what that's going to be is 16. And my as bad part of people, just like this free video that you're watching, I have more free materials for you, and there's no excuse for you not to get them. I have a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every single mistake. And on top of that, I have a free class on Zoom once a week, every single week for two hours. So imagine that. You got more free materials than just this YouTube video right over here. Let's keep pushing forward. Sign up right now, and I'll see you in the next class. Let's get started. And so the final answer here will end up being n to the power of 4 divided by 16. That right here is our final answer. And that will give us answer choice what? 
That'll give us answer choice. Let's go ahead and check it out. Right there, B. Almost didn't see it, but there it is. I was looking at the A and C from up here. But there's number three here. There's number three. Let's go ahead and check out number four here. Let's keep having some fun. So with number four, we're looking at 2x cubed divided by 2x to the power of negative one. Ooh, got a negative power in the exponent. I don't like that, right? No worries. First things first, before you actually do the, the division rule, you're not canceling those out because you have a negative exponent. So what you can do first is actually take care of business here. This x to the power of negative one, you can actually move it, flip it first, and then proceed. So we'll still have the same exact problem, but it's just gonna look a little different. It's just gonna look a little different, just like that. All we did was make sure that we have a positive exponent before we begin, that way we're not freaking out, right? So boom, there it is, and all we have to do now is, oh, look at that. We have a cancellation that happens right there, and then we also have, ooh, multiplying powers. When you multiply powers, what do you do again? Add those exponents and you're set. And so what we're gonna have here, those are gonna cancel again, so those are gone, and we just have x to the power of three plus one, which is four, and that's b. So number five, we have seven x to the power of negative five. Here we are. So seven x to the power of negative five. Well, the seven is gonna stay exactly where it is, because remember, that's a power of one. You're good. But the x to the power of negative five, how's that gonna look? x to the power of negative five, that's what's gonna flip. So this right here, this is what's gonna flip. So remember, everything is already over one. Every number, every whatever you wanna deal with is always gonna be divided by one. And so all we're doing now is again, moving it from where it was to where it's not. So the seven stays put, but it's the x to the power of negative five that gets flipped. And there it is right there. And so that's why our answer is gonna be B right there. I believe we had a lot of Bs for answers here, and that's okay. That's okay. The most important thing here is that we're learning, that way we can make progress in the right way. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.